Welcome to Talmudic Treasures. Today we're learning Kedushin page 59, which discusses a very interesting situation where you ask your friend to help you with something very important. For whatever reason, you cannot go and marry the woman of your dreams yourself. Instead, you give him money for Kedushin purposes and you say, could you please go to her and please marry her on my behalf? Because I really want to marry her. And the guy sees her and decides, you know what? I think I like her. And after maybe striking a little bit of a conversation, he ends up giving his own Kedushin money to betroth her. On this, the Talmud says that she is, of course, married to the second guy. However, there is an important line that's mentioned as well. It says that even though what he did is legally binding, that according to this, of course, he's married to her. However, what he did was wrong. He acted in a matter of trickery, of deception. He gave the impression that he was going to do the, the bidding of his friend. Instead, he ended up marrying her himself. That is considered to be legally binding, but unethical behavior. Similarly, the Talmud here talks about if, let's say, for example, you know for a fact that someone wants to buy a property and you see that they are engaged in this entire process and all they're doing is, let's say, getting their money in line and you just walk in and just give the money first, on that is also considered to be a form of trickery. And in fact, the Talmud gives a much stronger language. It says if you see someone who is poor and you see that they're trying to buy some food and there's, let's say, one hot pretzel left at the stand and there's no other food around and he's just trying to get a couple pennies here and there and you know in the matter of a few more seconds he's going to have enough money to buy this pretzel because he's a poor guy, it's difficult for him to get this money. And you just take your credit card and swipe your credit card and grab this pretzel. Now, legally, you are the owner of that pretzel and you could eat it in front of him and it's yours. However, the Torah tells us, the Talmud says something unbelievable. It says, if a person is mahapech b'charara, you have a poor person, again, in this case, and someone else goes and takes it from him, what is that person's status? Nikra Russia. You're considered to be an evil person, which is an unbelievable thing the Talmud here is telling us. You can follow every single rule. You can do everything exactly by the letter of the law, but you are still considered to be corrupt. You're still considered to be a Ramai, which is someone engaged in deception and trickery. And even under certain, certain circumstances, you can be con considered, and this is not just random language. The Torah does not allow you to call or label someone something if it's not true. This person is considered to be a Russia. He is wicked and evil. So, just because you follow laws does not necessarily make you an upstanding citizen. You're doing the bare minimum. Someone who commits crimes and breaks the law, they're criminals. So, we don't even have to talk about them. Obviously, they're doing the wrong thing. But even someone that actually does the laws and keeps them, and let's say they know the laws so well that they twist them and they do things in an unethical manner, but they know that there's no legal thing that could possibly get them into any trouble because they do everything, so to speak, by the book, that person is still in the eyes of God not a good person. And that's such an important lesson for us to recognize. There are 613 mitzvos, and you could keep every single one of them, but that does not necessarily mean that's going to define you as a good person. You have to be able to know how to act and behave in a proper way. And in these cases, if you see that there's another person that has an interest in something and you go and take that away from them, even though legally it's acceptable, it's still not okay.